London, Old Smoky, filled with iconic and historical landmarks. Tourists flock to this city in the millions, and now I'm gonna be one of them. But unlike then, I'm not gonna be jumping on the tour guide and tour bus bandwagon. I'm gonna navigate the city by myself and make my own personal tour on what can only be described as a <laughs> minimal budget. Welcome to my UK vlog series, hope you enjoy. Good morning everyone. Um, flight might be up to a little bit of a messy start already because I was supposed to be up at 8 o'clock but kind of had the jet lag something terrible last night at 10.30. So. The temperature here, I don't know, I was expecting it to be colder and I've got this big heavy jacket on. <laughs> I've only been walking for like three minutes and I'm already exhausted. Right around the back from the generator is actually one of my favorite London filming locations. Well, exterior locations I say because most of these like interior shots and stuff are all done in studio. So literally right around the back of the generator is this place and that is the exterior location for black books it still actually is even a bookshop i've not seen it open yet but that's the place classic if you look it up on google search it still comes up as black books rather than whatever its name is now anyway that's spot number one i'm going to king's cross maybe see if i can get a coffee while i'm there too big british library there st pancras and then king's cross is down in the corner so i walked past this last night and all lit up, it looks incredible as well. Like you wouldn't think that they have so many lights on all these old buildings. As soon as I came around the corner from St. Pancras, there's a Costa Coffee right in the corner. Costa Coffee is like a branded coffee store, you know, like Tim Hortons or Starbucks. And the coffee was necessary because I am so incredibly jet lagged. Do bear with me as soon as I'm done, we'll continue on King's Cross. Also, I will just say that the budget idea is already off to a good start. The medium flat white was £3.55. <laughs> So far I've been checking a lot of different train options and things to head up north. I can't remember how many of them or which one of it was. I'd be heading out of King's Cross and it is, well, it's possible that I might end up here again at some point to take the train up north. That's the other thing about King's Cross is it's the home of the Platform 9 3 quarters from the Harry Potter movies. And everyone got out in their droves for it. This was one of the reasons why I should have been in early today. I thought the Camden Market yesterday was busy. This place is perhaps way, way busier. They've got each house team, Hell Buff, Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Slytherin. I mean, obviously, Hufflepuff's the best, obviously. I really want to know what butterbeer tastes like, because it's in every Harry Potter film from, like, I think, the third one up. But unfortunately, that's not in my budget for this budget trip, so I'm going to have to get creative. That's King's Cross now. I'm on my way to the second destination on my travel plan. But I'm trying to work this one out without using the assistance of my phone, so I'm pretty sure I need to take the center line to Baker Street. I'm trying to see just how intuitive this network actually is, because it's all very well mapped out and signed. And this is a system that I really like about the organization skills of the general public on the underground systems. So there's one side for standing and there's one side for, for walking. And that way if you're in a rush, you're not being impeded. If you're not in a rush, you're not impeding others. It's kind of nice not being in the way too. The Baker Street platform looks far more rustic, old school. This looks like one of the older stations. It looks incredible. I need to be heading out, not wandering around filming stuff. That there is Madame Tussauds, uh, the Waxworks Museum. Also not in budget, but I have been there before. If you've watched my channel before, you'll know exactly what I think about Waxworks Museums. This one is possibly better than the one that I saw in Niagara. The whole point in going was to look at how bad the Waxworks were. So I don't want to see a good Waxworks, I want to see hilariously bad ones. Either way, I've come over to Baker Street for one thing and one thing only. 
Some of you may already be further ahead than me on this one. But Baker Street, famously, is the home of Sherlock Holmes. So, as you might know from watching my videos as well before, I'm a huge Sherlock Holmes fan. This is the only attraction that I paid to get in. As soon as I got inside, they said photographs are allowed, but no video. Coming inside, just so you know, no filming. Thank you. So here's me sneakily pretending to take photographs. The Sherlock Holmes Museum, 221B Baker Street. Famously, Sherlock Holmes' known residence in the books. Right next to, I'll actually add, while I'm here, the Beatles store. Uh, something I've just discovered about all my UK cash that I brought. I still have the old paper notes, and nowhere's accepting the paper notes now. I mean, I guess I'm very, very behind the times with that one. I just figured that I had some from my last trip to the UK, and I could still use them, but I have to try and find a Bank of England somewhere to get them converted. Maybe we'll try and do that later. Anyway, on to the next destination now. Oxford Circus. From Oxford Circus to Piccadilly Circus, you can walk down Regent Street, which I guess at night as well, it would be really spectacular with all the lights on, Christmas deco and things. Regent Street's iconic though. Right. Running parallel to Regent Street is Savile Row, which is famous for its bespoke or tailored suits. Even modern day celebrities and stuff come down here to get fitted up with fancy suits. At least one nice custom fitted tailored Savile Row suit would be nice, but... Once again, is not in budget for this trip. Maybe one day though, maybe. So this is Piccadilly Circus, which like the equivalent of Times Square in New York. I mean, that's the only thing that I can really acquaint it to, but I mean, Piccadilly Circus in itself is its own thing. I mean, it's iconic of London. All the little touristy shops, all the little tourism shops and stuff. Restaurants and hot dog spot. I mean, hot dog's not very British, but you know what I mean. And then the statue in the middle. A lot of theaters and stuff too. I mean, everything about it is iconic. There's also, up on this big screen here, is an advertisement for Modern Warfare 3, which, if I remember rightly, in one of the Modern Warfare games, there was like an attack at this spot as well. That's how iconic it is. It's making it into big like video games and things. I'm on an incredible time limit here now, so this is going to have to be a very, very passing visit again. Wish I had more time to spend having a look around all the shops and stuff here, but unfortunately, I've got to be going. I just stumbled upon Pall Mall. Now I'm starting to think that maybe the number of locations that I've already gone past, I should have done like a Monopoly board version of this tour or something, gone around all of the major Monopoly locations. That definitely would have taken a long time though, and I wouldn't have had the budget for it. I wouldn't be able to buy houses and hotels in each one of them anyway. Maybe an idea for another time. The end of Waterloo Place, just across there is the mall, and then ultimately um, Buckingham Palace, which I will circle back to after hitting Trafalgar Square. But um, I have a special reason for wanting to visit Trafalgar Square. Another iconic landmark here is the National Gallery. One of the major reasons I wanted to come by here was because of these giant lions. I think it was this one, actually, if I lined it up just right. Around here somewhere. There's a picture of me, my brother, and my dad when we were really little. Back in like 1990. I wouldn't even conjecture to remember which year it was, but there's a photograph of the three of us sitting on this line with that steeple in the background. Unfortunately now, for that exact reason, you're not allowed to climb on the lines anymore. A bit difficult to see from down here too, but right at the top, amongst the lines, is Nelson's column. Anyway, onwards with the tour, I guess. See if I can be sneaky here and get a good shot down the mall. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that incredible? Also just down there is Whitehall. Very, very confused. Not that kind of Whitehall. The other most iconic locations you have to come and see if you're in London is of course Buckingham Palace. Buckingham Palace has, as you know, don't piss off the King's Guard, whatever you do. <laughs> I don't know how much of that just came out, but I managed to make it just time to see the guard. The precision. <laughs> 
So that course is the legendary Buckingham Palace. Next up, I'm heading down here, Westminster Abbey. I'm not 100% sure how much help this is gonna be, but since I've been traveling solo on this one, I've been feeling kind of lonely. So at platform nine and three quarters, the hard part of shop, I picked up a little traveling companion. It's a Niffler. It might look like a platypus, but it's a Niffler. They're supposed to be, you know, good at hunting gold and stuff and potentially bringing you lots of money. I'm trying to think of a good classic British name to call him, so I think I'll call him Charlie. Charlie the Niffler, that'll do. <laughs> There it is now, Westminster Abbey. I think, as a genius once said, hands down, best abbey I ever seen. Back around there, of course, Westminster Palace or the Houses of Parliament and Westminster Tower, uh, commonly referred to as Big Ben, but that's actually just the name of the bell. Okay, so there it is now. See the big bang? It's the one hell of a size you don't want it. I've read enough spy novels and enough Sherlock Holmes books to know if you dragged that river, goodness only knows what kind of treasures you'd find down there. Along with a lot of muck and stuff too, obviously. But the goodness knows what's down there. Gold, treasure, guns, who knows. If you read enough mafia books and stuff, maybe the odd body will be down there too. Just stumbled upon the COVID memorial wall. Everyone's written names and love hearts of people they lost to COVID, I suppose. Westminster Palace in all of its glory. So the graffiti tunnel, um, also known as Leak Street Arches, the entrance to the tunnel is here. That up there is actually Waterloo Station. So it's directly underneath there. the work, the skill, temporary art, I guess you'd call it. And in my opinion, it probably rivals like a lot of the, the classic art galleries. If you have time, definitely come down and check it out. It's amazing. And it's constantly being updated and changed. So you never know what you're gonna see every time you come here. And that was, of course, the monumentally iconic graffiti tunnel. That's beautiful. Really enjoyed that. Next up, the London Eye. I definitely recommend, if you've got time, to give the London Eye a go. It's a great way to see the city from up high. You also get some great pictures with uh, Westminster Tower, Westminster Palace and things in the background. It may be noted as well that so far I haven't stopped for food anywhere. That's only because I'm on like a time frame. I'm trying to get through everything as fast as possible and stopping to sit down and having something to eat for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes would probably cut into my time a little bit too much. But it's not through lack of variety. I mean, there are things everywhere. There's freshly homemade pizza right here by the London Eye. There's been cafes and restaurants and if cafes and restaurants isn't your thing, there's plenty of like street foods and vendors and stuff all over the place. There's, you kind of spoil for choice more than anything. Definitely worth to see that thing. So other things here on the South Bank, right by the London Eye, include the London Dungeon, Trek's Adventure, Sea Life London Aquarium. This one's a pretty common one. It comes up on a lot of like uh, tourist advisory sites and things like TripAdvisor. Anyway, next stop is going to be the Tower of London and Tower Bridge. So I need to point my way down to there now. The easiest way to get there would probably be by underground, but um, I would kind of like to make this leg of the trip a little bit different. So I'm going to try and take one of the boats. There's me an Uber boat, which apparently you just use your Oyster card, tap on, tap off, the same way you would with the underground or with the buses and things. I have about 13 minutes before the boat gets here. The time to try butter beer. Well, cheers. That's not bad, actually. Another thing fans of Sherlock Holmes might know is the Thames, famous for in the sign of four when Holmes and Watson chased Jonathan Small and his Andaman Islander down the river as he disposed of all of the gold and all of the jewelry into the Thames of the famous Allegra treasure. I know, I'm learning a big time here. Tower of London. This is where you like to see the iconic bee theaters. Um, it's, oh, look, there's a rainbow. Hey, <laughs> is that coming out? This is also where they keep the crown jewels and things. You wanna pay the fare to get in. Don't expect to see them for very long because it's quite a passing glance. I 
think this is probably as far west as I'm likely to go. Okay, so the next destination on my list is free entry, but um, unfortunately, you need to book a ticket in order to get in. And I haven't booked my ticket in advance, and next available tickets are November the 27th. Everything before then online, it seems like it's fully booked out of. So it's a no-go for me, unfortunately. Would have been cool to see, but if you are planning on coming to see the Sky Garden, remember to book ahead. Totally would be worth seeing, especially at this time of day. The sun's just going down. The sun would be like just coming across. St. Paul's Cathedral, I mean, arguably at night, it actually probably looks better than it would during the day. I think I'm on the wrong side of it, though. I need to get onto the other side. Isn't that cool? I like how a lot of the monuments are like well lit here too, so even at night you can still see them really well. And right out from St. Paul's Cathedral here actually is the Monium Bridge, which since I'm already on this side, I figured I'd go and have a nosy at this side here. So like I say, St. Paul's Cathedral, Millennium Bridge. And then unfortunately, I think I'm gonna to have to call it quits for the day because I need to get up early tomorrow again, ish, and catch a train all the way up to Dis. And I think that concludes my walking tour of London. Um, hope you liked this video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Stick around though, because it's likely to be—it's likely to be crazy.